everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. I'm Jed Toffer. Thanks for listening. You know, my wife Vicki and I have owned and operated our photography studio, V Gallery, for 20 years now. White House has been our lab for the last 16 of those years, and we could not be happier. White House is a family-run business, just like ours. If you haven't already, check them out at whcc.com. And if you want to drop me a line, feel free to email me at jed at whcc.com. Hey, everyone. This episode with Joel Grimes was recorded several weeks ago at WPPI, so obviously we didn't take the pandemic into account. Joel mentions a workshop, The Photo Creators, he's scheduled to teach at in Tucson. And I just wanted to let you know that workshop isn't being canceled but postponed to this fall. You can find out more information at thephotocreators.com. Thanks for listening. And stay safe, friends. Some of you longtime listeners might know that I have lists. One of those lists is a short one of people I've known in the photo industry for a very long time but have never met. And the shorter version of that list is of people I've really wanted to meet but just haven't for whatever reason. Well, I was down to two people on that list, Joel Grimes and Mike Cologne. And a couple weeks ago at WPPI, not only did I get to meet Joel Grimes, but through Canon, we got to sit down for a chat. To say that Joel delivered would be an enormous understatement. As I'm editing, I cut clips from these podcasts to use for social media and YouTube promos. I got to the point where I just had to stop grabbing clips because it was starting to become the entire conversation. Joel is full of knowledge and experience, but he's not full of himself, and that's a wonderful combination. I invite you now to just sit back and take this one in. I'm sure glad I got to. So why don't you start off just by giving me the, like the formalities regarding who you are? Well, so um, I grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Yeah. And so it's not a real small town, but it's a kind of a podunk town, I mean, in a way. Um, but um, my dad was a fireman, ended up assistant fire chief of Tucson, hardworking guy. Uh, and we had a big family. There was five kids. Uh, so we didn't have a lot. But we had the basics met. Yeah. But at a uh, young age, uh, I started, um, well, when you get, you know, mowing lawns and working for my, whatever I had to, in terms of, you know, a new bike or whatever, I had to work for it. Yeah. And so I look back now and I, I look at some of the current generations of <laughs> kids coming up and I, and I see how even my kids, I got four boys. Uh, how we tend to shower our kids with things thinking yeah. that it's going to benefit them. And then in the end they, you know, tend to look for others to give them stuff all the time. Yeah. And, and I, I remember looking back just everything I had, I was, I was, I think uh, flipping hamburgers or whatever, working in fast foods at 15, 16, back when you could do that. Yeah. Now I don't, they have age limits, but you know, and then I would, I would work for a couple months and then I would, um, I was really into backpacking. I love the outdoors. So I'd work a, you know, a job for three months, get enough money, and I'd take off and do a trip. Um, and then I'd come back. I could get a job in a heartbeat. I mean, I was shy, but I, was, I knew that if I knocked on the door and said, hey, I'm, I'm here, I can work, I'm a hard worker, eventually they'd hire me. I just, they do kids, because kids come and go, right? So I worked a lot of jobs, uh, and then I, uh, uh, eventually I did uh, construction, uh, did painting houses, uh, put myself through college painting houses. Uh, my dad, you know, paid for, I think my books, but I paid for everything else. Um, so it took me a few years to get through college. Uh, I ended up, um, my first semester was at, uh, in college was at a junior college in Tucson, Pima community college. And then I eventually went to ASU for two years and then U of A, I finished up U of A. But that first semester, um, I had a, photography teacher by the name of Lou Bernal. Mm -hmm. And he was the most inspirational and dynamic uh, instructor or teacher I've ever had. And he started out the class by saying, photography is not just a way to document the world around you, but it can also be a way for you to be an artist and be a creative force. And I looked at that, I'm you know, 19 years old, 18, 19 years old, and I went, that's what I want to be. 
a creative force. Someone out there that's creating. And I was already playing guitar and singing, writing songs, and eventually I was in a band for a while. So I had this uh, sort of drive toward doing something that I could step back and say, I did that. Mm. That's my creation. Mm. And it was not a, it is not, and you talk to my wife or anyone around that hangs out with me, I am not driven by being the center of attention. Mm. I don't care about all the pats on the back and people saying how wonderful I am. What I care about is that ability to go and take something that did not exist, take your creative juices, whatever, and then apply it to something and then say, that did not exist yesterday. Mm. You know, and I can step back and say that that's part of my, my, you know, my hard work in, in the creative uh, process. So um, even today, being thrown into the limelight of things, um, it, walk on the floor down there, you know, people come up to you. <laughs> I, I, I don't live for that. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I always say that um, it's the picture on the wall that's the greatest single sort of thrill for me, is seeing my picture on the wall. So, um, but, I, I, but I took that first semester, and Lou, Lou Bernal was an incredible teacher, and very inspirational. And he really set the tone for, we'll see, that's 42 years ago, I guess. So I've been, dry, I've been, I've been uh, going forward. Uh, my goal is to be a, a working photographer. And, and now even Lou Bernal said, look, the odds aren't very good to be a working photographer. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, he put on, the, he put on the, uh, the chalkboard, he said, before PowerPoint and all, you know, overhead projectors right. and stuff but he put on the chalkboard we remember chalkboards yeah <laughs> he put out and he said he wrote a hundred thousand on the on the chalkboard he yeah. said only ten thousand a hundred thousand photographers graduate every year with a degree in photography he said only ten thousand will go on and work as you know working photographer so it's a 90 percent failure rate and i looked at that and i the first thing that popped in my head was that's good news. Yeah, ten percent's a lot. <laughs> you, you know, I got a good shot at this. <laughs> well, it's like that's ninety percent of people I have to deal with anymore. Yeah, you know, and, <laughs> I see. It's and, even and, better. Yeah, and so so, um, I know that sounds weird. You were past the I have a good shot. You were already knew you were in the ten yes. percent, and yeah. you were excited that ninety percent were people you're gonna have gonna to compete fail. with. <laughs> and and then he said only. Ten uh, percent of that ten thousand will go and be in a working, mm. like commercial advertising or whatever level, and then only ten percent of those will go on and, and do a coffee table book, you know, on a level or whatever. And then only ten percent. He went through this whole thing and he right. came down to um, like one dude. Know, yeah, Ansel Adams. You know, <laughs> yeah. circle. Yeah. You know, to get there. Now I know that sounds weird, but that little simple illustration on the chalkboard. Dro- has been driven has been a driving force for me for 42 years you were motivated by that yes i looked at it and i said i'm going to do a coffee table i'm going to be a commercial advertising photographer i'm going to do a coffee table book i'm going to work on a national level i'm going to work on an international level i mean i looked at the the odds of going down now then my dad i come home and he'd say son you gotta face the facts <laughs> you're not going to make any money in photography <laughs> and, and, uh, Jeez. you know, come down he used to say, come down to reality, get out of the clouds, come down mm-hmm. to reality. And I was starving. I was living in a warehouse, sleeping on a foam mat in a sleeping bag, no heat. And this was back when I went to Denver, you know, I was, I was willing to pay the price for, for that, that, that dream. And I had people come along and, you know, you know, art directors as you know, the, my first portfolio showing was a disaster. Guy told me to go back to Tucson um, you know, he said, you'll never make it. And, and then, you know, I, I, but I wouldn't listen to it. I, I just kept going for it. And then even when I got married, it was still a challenge. I started having kids and, you know, I was scrambling, trying to get work. And so it's been a long haul, uh, but I've always been driven by the creative process. And I have a lot of friends, a lot of colleagues that I rubbed elbows with in the early days in Denver, good photographers. I mean, talented photographers. They're not doing it today because they were driven more by the prestige of being a photographer mm. and the money of it. And I made more money than all of them because I was driven by the creative process. So you think you would attribute, I'm going to put this together for myself. You would attribute the fact that you overcame obstacles and like, despite discouraging statistics, and the things that your dad was saying, because I've heard that a lot, you know, from parents. Right. They're concerned about their, their children's well-being, and they think, hey, you, oh, need, yeah. to, you need to do something that's going to make a buck that's to right. support yourself. I get all that, right? 
but what do you, you say the creative process and I get it and I can, but a lot of, I, I know a lot of people that abide by the creative process that are part of the 90%. Yeah. Because they're missing one, one very, very important, uh, I guess, part of the pie and that's, you got to learn how to market. You got to learn how to market, market. You got to be, so, so, so I had a buddy who when my, went to Denver after I graduated from college and he went to art center. Um, and so he got a commercial or, you know, more of a, what would you call a real working, uh, advertising type degree to be mm -hmm. a photographer. I was fine arts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know anything about strobes. I didn't know, anything. you know, we, we knew how to take a picture of our shadow, you know, and, <laughs> you know, be, be an artist, that type. So, so I had that. Well, I learned a lot of art history too, which is, I was at the time I was like, well, I'm going to learn all this art history. But you got uh, that, that's, that's in your bag. That's been helpful at oh, yeah. some point. Oh, for oh, you, oh right? yeah. Yeah. Very, very helpful. Um, and knowing what's been done in the past right. helps forward to the future. Yes. But, um, at the time I, I wish I had gone to art center, but I couldn't afford 50 grand a year. Right. Right. Um, and so the point was though, he, uh, in in art center, I think they are a little bit more of preparing you for the real world, you yeah. know. But but even that they fail, they fail. But this guy Steve was a master marketer. He saw the world completely different than anyone else. And so when we set up a studio in Denver, we were buddies um, and studio mates. He hounded me to get out and market. And he taught me a lot about marketing. And then I learned a lot from that also just over the years. But um, so we can get into the marketing side of things. But, but that sounds like a lot of work. Oh, my gosh. Well, here, so here's why I'm saying that. Because the theme that I'm getting from you so far is a, a person can be gifted. You can have talents. You can have aspirations. You can have all these desires. You can be surrounded by circumstance. It is whatever it is, right? But how much of your success retrospectively now that you've got the 40 years or whatever to look back on, would you just flat out attribute to elbow grease? Yeah. Hard work. It's called the rat like cunning ability to go out and find a piece of cheese. You have to have that to a level that is, um, you know, uh, that, well, and, and the other thing too, is there's a lot of misconceptions on how we look at the marketplace. And so, you know, I always say when we got married, you know, when you get married, you, you think, oh, I'm going to be the best husband in the world. It's going to be, you know, <laughs> it's going to be the Hollywood, you know, marriage. <laughs> and then, you know, you do something stupid and your wife slams the door and she, you know, yeah. yells at you, whatever, because you're an idiot. <laughs> and, you know, and then same thing with you being a dad. You think I'm going to, my kids are going to love me. They're going to just mm. think I'm the greatest dad. And then mm -hmm. you make mistakes, you know, um, but life is that way. And we, we look at, you know, this path, I'm going to be this great photographer, the world's going to be at my, my fingertips. And it's not, the, that's not what happens, but the, 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 there's some misconceptions about marketing that, um, in, unless you know the big picture, you will never survive in the marketplace. And the one single biggest uh, misconception is that you think that if I develop a really good skill set to create a picture that I'm going to get a lot of work. Right. Okay. So, so you, you spend this time, you know, you know, learn how to get a picture and focus and good exposure and whatever it is. But I mean, a level of, you know, being a, a master craft craftsman or whatever mm -hmm. craft person. Um, and, uh, if you're pitching either art director, or a photo editor, or even, you know, even a wedding, uh, getting, if you're a wedding photographer, uh, winning over a mother and, uh, a bride to be, um, the, the fact is, is that, um, people don't want to make a decision, um, unless they have to, unless they have a crisis. So when you have an art director that's sitting in a chair that's making decisions to hire photographers, uh, generally they have uh, uh, a, a number of photographers they've been working with on a, on, a, on a regular basis. And then unless that photographer does a really bad job, you know, does something stupid, there's not a gap to be filled, mm -hmm. right? So you call up an art director and you say, hey, I'm the world's greatest photographer. And they go, whatever. They don't have any interest in because I'm good right now. Yeah, I'm good. Right. I won all these awards. Who cares? <laughs> and so, right. So, um, you're I, just talking about this is what, this is what the real world is like. This absolutely. is how it goes. Absolutely. Right. And so I learned early on that I, I said the stating the statement that a persistence or, um, the ability to get my name in their brain, I call it the power of eight. If I get my name in their brain, 
that's a thousand times more important than an amazing portfolio. Okay. A thousand times more important. Mm-hmm. Squeaky so, wheel gets the grease. Well, but it's it's this weird thing about our the way hum, humans re- interact and how we think and how we work is that we don't. So when someone comes up and says, "I'm a really good photographer uh, and I could, you know, be your knight in shining armor." <laughs> The credibility, there's no, there's no like, oh, thank you for showing up my doorstep. <laughs> it's like, would you stop being a pest and right. you know, get out of here? Leave right? me alone. You leave it me has alone. the opposite effect. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so, so I discovered something early on and I get into this. I do all these huge talks on this, but the, the truth is that every person that has to make a decision to either buy something, hire somebody or whatever at some point we'll have a crisis mm. they will in a given year a given month given whatever time period they will have a crisis and that's the crack to, in the door that gets me in so what i do and i learned a long time ago is that i am this the the you know the 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 annoying person that keeps sending somebody something uh, little little promo piece. I make a phone call. You're not worried about being annoying. Oh no, annoying is the best thing possible, <laughs> because they're going to have a crisis. Yeah. Their number one photographer, his wife's having a baby. He's yeah. out. The second photographer is on vacation. Mm-hmm. The third photographer got hit by a truck the day before and is in the hospital. There's going to be a crisis in which their boss says, "Where's this? Where's we had a uh, a shoot? Where's the photographer? Right. Oh, and then all of a sudden." The panic kids. Who are they going to think of? The person that's most annoying. Right. I have built my whole career on this. <laughs> it's not because I'm a good photographer that's got me in the door. It's because I'm persistent and annoying. And so that sounds, so that's a blow to my ego, right? Because <sighs> I want to think it's my great photography that gets me in. But you also are a great photographer. No, 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 wait, hold on a second though. I didn't start out a great photographer. And even when I started actually working as a commercial advertising photographer, I wasn't that good. And it took 40 years okay. for me to become a good photographer. Fair enough. It's because I've been doing it for so long. I, and, and, I, and I've learned how to make a, a picture that's appealing to right. uh, the marketplace. Um, I didn't start out like that. And so um, that's why I say talent is so overrated. <laughs> it is so overrated. Well, because you, it, as far as like being able to do this and being able to like pl- be in the game for such a long time, I think you're 100% correct because I know – lots of ludicrously talented photographers that either can't do it anymore, haven't done it in a while because they, they can't make money. They can't, right. They don't have a business anymore. And then I know some relatively mediocre photographers that are rocking that it, are killing it. Absolutely. Because they're, they're master marketers. Yeah. And so that's the dilemma that we live in, in a world where we think that I go to school, I get this, you know, I spend $200,000 for a degree, uh, and I'm going to be this great photographer. I, I, I've spoke at probably a dozen, uh, photography programs, a uh, graduating class is coming out. And I always say that only 10% of you are going to make it. And even that 10%, a fraction of them are actually going to make really good living at it. It's because not because your skill set of as a photographer it's because you're, uh, you know, you're lacking skill set of marketing. Is it so, unfair? No, here's the beauty of it. Here's the wonderful thing about the marketplace is that if I get that one small piece of the pie, I figure it out. I can make a freaking amazing living as a photographer. If I don't get it, then I get washed down the drain. Mm-hmm. So there's the solution is there. It's just that most people don't understand it, the, the, the actual problem. But also what a lot of people don't understand is that, okay, so so when I go and say I want to learn something on the computer, uh, maybe it's a photo- uh, Photoshop thing, uh, smart objects or something. Mm-hmm. You know, someone's like, oh, yeah, I've got to get, you got to learn smart objects. <laughs> and you go, okay, what is that? You know, and you keep hearing this and you go, and you go, uh, and you're like figuring it out. And someone maybe has a lecture and it goes right over your head. You go, man, I don't understand this. So, this is a true story because I didn't understand smart objects, you know. <laughs> You know, I don't know, eight years ago or whatever it. it was. I get it. And I, I, okay. And then what happens is I go, it's too difficult for me to learn. I give up. Mm-hmm. I can't do it. 
Um, so what I learned from a long time ago from learning uh, uh, computers and, and complex things, I go, there's a brick wall. It takes one brick at a time to knock it down. Hmm. And I'm going to learn it. I am going to learn how to do that. And I'm persistent enough to say it's just a matter of time, a matter of focus. I'm going to learn it. It's not a, it's not a problem that I cannot solve. It just takes time, energy, and I'm not going to quit. And so, you know, my wife will tell you that I'm a very, very focused person because I know that I have to get over that hump to survive. Why are you like that? Um, you know, my son, uh, I got three boys in LA. They're chasing their dream, being mm-hmm. filmmakers. Uh, one's going to law school, but I mean, it, so it, it, there's only three of them are kind of creative on side, but, um, well, the uh, filmmakers are probably going to need a lawyer. Oh my God. I know we talk about that all the time. It's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. You got to have at least, He's a, gonna be like, yeah. I'm here for you guys. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly. We need an attorney in the family. Um, but um, you know, I keep telling my boys, you know, the same spiel I'm telling you. Uh-huh. I, 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 I always, when I, a lot of times when I talk about marketing, I talk, I say, this is how I talk to my sons, uh-huh. the way I'm talking to you. Mm-hmm. My son, Aaron said, dad, you just, you're a special breed. You know, you're just, you don't understand. You have this drive and this focus. I go, you know, it could be part of my personality, but it is also something that I've had to learn. So let me, let me put it this way. Okay. As an educator, and I have a group of people in front of me, if I believed that the only people in that room that are actually going to make it are people that were born with it, mm. then I have, wouldn't have a job mm-hmm. as an educator. I believe it's something you can learn. It's something that you can counter your weaknesses. The personality that says, I don't want to go out and talk to people. Yeah. And then you learn, I got to talk to people. Okay, I'm going to learn how to talk to people. Yeah. I may not like it, but I'm going to learn how to do it. So hey, the, how you proce- the process itself separates the wheat from the chaff, regardless of your talent That's or right. your ability. That's right. Right? To me, it's a mindset. I have to put on a mindset that I'm going to knock down the wall, mm-hmm. that I'm going to go and become a working photographer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to become a working photographer. It's not, oh, can I become a working photographer? I am going to be one or I will achieve that. It's not positive thinking in a way that, you know, think I'm going to be good looking, I'm going to be good looking, you know, or <laughs> whatever it is. I mean, I, I've been thinking I, I'm going to have hair and it just doesn't seem to show <laughs> up. Not hap- that part's it's not, not happening. happening. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, it's this idea that I'm on a journey and the journey is going to be full of a bunch of roadblocks and that, <laughs> potholes. I get that you've learned it. And I think that you've learned more of it because, and I'm going to, so I'm pushing, I'm pushing you a little bit here because you had that mindset when you were 18 though. I, there's no question to me that you've learned more of it and you've grown and you've evolved into this creative force that you are now. There's no question. I get all that. I don't want to diminish any of that, but you were the dude in the classroom that framed the 90%, 10% as good news because you were already in the 10% in your mind and you were 18. Well, you knew it then already. But here's another thing too, is uh, there's times when I have been so beat down that I wanted to quit. I mean, that's happened to me, right? So I've been brought to tears and I wanted to quit. Yeah. Um, And I've had people that have been there for me, uh, rescued me to some degree, right? Um, so I've been fortunate. There have been some things that have happened in my life, the right teacher, the right person that yeah. rescued me when I was like, Oh, I could have quit, yeah. you know? And, and so, so it's, um, it, it is not all me. Does that make sense? No, I get it. And I'm not going to discount the fact that I have a very strong faith and I know, you know, a lot of people don't want you to get into anything like that, you know, get, you know. It's not religion that I'm after or that I, it, it's a faith that I have, that I believe there's something greater than me at work and huh. that I have that to lean on in times of difficulty. And so that has been there for me too. So there's some, there's a strength that comes from that. But like I said, I, it, it, there's, it is, it is, I think a mindset and then having someone paint the overarching marketplace and my friend steve did that for me Mm -hmm. he said you know all these little quotes he used to give me all the time so i had someone if it wasn't for him i don't think i would be here he's one of those pieces he's an important piece a very important piece yeah right and and the thing is 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 you can only give someone enough encouragement and advice but at some point you can't hold their hand anymore all right 
It's on and them. so, so it, Steve yeah. didn't have to hold my hand, but he did get me sort of out to, to see the big picture. Mm-hmm. And so I, I want to, I want to paint the big picture for people, um, and say it's possible and say that, you know, maybe you're not the best photographer around at least right now, but it's possible if you keep practicing the same thing over and over for 40 years, you'll get pretty darn good. Um, you said yesterday from the stage and I'm assuming you're going to remember this. You said, repeat, repeat, repeat. That's my secret. It is. I heard you say that as yeah. I was walking by. Whether you play the guitar or you juggle, whatever, you have to take your craft to the point of where you master it by repeating it over and over. Now, um, we are in a great age of, of not just photography, but education. We can go to YouTube or we can go anywhere. There's tutorials. I got... 40, 50 hours of training that I've got available for people. It's like, it's there. Yeah. And, um, a a fraction of the cost of what we could have gotten at say even 10 years ago. Yeah. Um, and so the materials there, the encouragements there, um, you know, but it's a mindset. You have to say, do I want this? And what do I, what's the price I'm willing to pay? And it's not like I have to go sell myself on the streets, you know, uh, you know, to make it happen. Um, or sell my soul to the devil, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And what it is, is it's a mindset. Mm-hmm. Now, I always say that um, there's a couple things. To learn something new, you got to let go of something old. An old concept, an old idea. Okay, so you say, oh, here's what I'm doing every day. And someone comes along and says, no, you're beating your head on the, against the wall here. You're doing it all wrong. And you go, oh, really? So you had to let go of the old mindset to take on the new mindset. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so um, the other thing, too, is that we all have to make a sacrifice of something for the time that it takes to put in to make this happen. Mm -hmm. You have to let go of something. So you say, every morning I want to get up and surf. So you get up and surf and you spend three hours surfing every morning and that's your love, right? Well, maybe you turn that into, well, I'm going to photograph surfers, right? But it's like, you can't spend three hours a day playing. You're, You're wasting too much time. So when my kids are on PlayStation or Xbox or whatever, <laughs> I come in and go, what is this doing to help you in your career? You're wasting three hours just doing really nothing. Uh, yeah. You got to give it up. And maturity sometimes allows us to get up. When you have a 30-year-old still playing, you know, video games, it's like, okay, and you're, and you're going, I don't have a job. I don't know what to do. Well, yeah, okay. Well, here's your reason. I'm you know. sorry that I'm laughing. Because <laughs> you play video games. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> What do you do when you have a 45-year-old that's playing video games? Like everything you're saying, I'm like, oh, I don't know what his gamer tag is. Yeah, I could probably, yeah, yeah. We could probably get online later tonight. But I, no, I understand what you're saying. Well, you know, I used to love to watch football on Sundays. and I. Well, I, I was going to ask you, what did you give up? Well, so I, I, I've given up a lot of things. But one of the things that I tell people that mm. uh, 10 years ago, I was 50. I turned 50. I reinvented myself 10 years ago. Well, now it's been... Uh, 12 years ago. But, um, but I basically said to, to my wife and, and I said, I'm not done yet. It was kind of a bad time in the economy and everything. And I said, I'm not done yet. And that's when I literally exploded onto the marketplace. I literally wrote the book on lighting because uh, I cracked the code to it. Mm-hmm. And I'd been shooting commercial advertising ad campaigns and I didn't really understand lighting. Mm-hmm. So I was able at 50 years old to completely reinvent myself and explode on the marketplace and pass up all the young photographers that were the hip hipsters, you know, that mm-hmm. were doing all this cool, cool stuff. It was like 08 or 09. Yep. I think I remember that. So, so it's possible to make a dent in the marketplace, but I had to go and put on a mindset. And what I did was I was pretty comfortable because I was making really good money as a commercial advertising yeah. photographer. When the, when the economy went kind of t- t- uh, t- uh, crashed or whatever, right. I had to think about, okay, what am I going to do, right? But that was the best thing that ever happened to me. Right. Because all of a sudden I had to say, what, it was, what am I going to do to take it to the next level? And I said, I got to give up some stuff. And one of the things I said because my wife loves football more than I do. Is that right? She's a Bronco fan to the hilt, right? And so um, so Sundays, you know, in the winter months or whatever, we'd watch football. That was Sundays, you know. What is that, a four-hour commitment? 
And I learned something because I was starting to do composites. And one of the things that I learned was that the best time to do backgrounds is on Sunday because everything, the downtown's closed down and all these places that, you know, normally have a bunch of cars, all these, uh, uh, you know, opportunities to do backgrounds are on Sunday, you know? And my point is, is that I said, look, I got to give up football. And, and, um, I was talking to one of the uh, groups and there was a cannon guy there and he was in the back and he said, say it isn't so. Yeah. You know? Right. And so, um, so for, for the last 10 years or 12 years, um, I maybe watched Super Bowl. That's it. I don't watch football. You really did. Give oh, I it gave up. it up. Yeah. Because that's a huge chunk of time. Yeah. And there's other things, um, that, you know, we look at that eat up our time. So if you think about, I don't know about you guys, but when you think about how many hours you spend on Netflix Uh, or whatever it is to entertain yourself, which is, I am spending more time now on my wife and I have some shows been watching and stuff. And it's great (laughs) for, for the first time in really 10 years, 12 years, I'm actually taking my evenings and spending it doing something other than Photoshop mm. or something. Mm. Um, cause I'd work into the night, you know? And, um, so the idea of an eight hour day, that's, that's like, that's for the wusses, you know, I'm you know, putting in huge amounts of time to get to my end result. And I'm now get, able to back off a little bit and have some enjoyment. And I'm 62 years old. I'm not, you know, you know, well at 50, I was, you know, I'm not a spring chicken. Right. right. But at 62, I'm a little bit, you know, going, Hey, you know what? There's more than just photography. Um, what does that look like? That was my next question. Well, you. I just bought this, uh, uh the, the, uh, Sprinter, uh, van. Oh, you guys. Yeah. The little rebel. Um, mm-hmm. it's four, you got a rebel. Yeah. Four by four. Nice. And, um, I'm going to start doing projects. I'm, I'm going to, uh, you know, just take off. I, I hate getting on an airplane. i I was averaging 45 speaking events a year. Um, Goodness. and some of them are week long, you know, like Texas school and yep. things like that. Yep. And then I got my commercial work. I'm gone 230 days a year easily, mm. you know, sometimes 300 days a year I'm gone. Mm-hmm. And so I'm now, I want to go and get in this van and take off and do projects. Uh, whether it's, uh, you know, maybe I'm, I do a project on the surfers, uh, you know, in California, portraits of surfers or whatever, California. Cowboys in Montana. I mean, whatever it is, I'm going to start doing projects where it's, it's me, uh, you know, out with my camera. And, um, I spend a lot of time either on stage, uh, in front of a video camera. Um, you know, I I, recording what I'm doing, which is fun. I'm going to do more, some of that too, but I want to go out there with just me, nobody around me, or maybe one assistant, not, you know, like this entertainment thing where I have to always be you know, okay, here I have a, you know, lens and I'm talking about what I'm doing. Right. It's like, just go out and shoot projects. So that's my next wave of really having fun. It's do still you, a photography. Do you remember Dean Collins? Did oh, you ever know him? I never met him, but I, I, I remember buying my first ever educational DVD, whatever. Yeah. Was Dean Software Collins. Cinema. Well, yeah. yeah. And he was way ahead of his time in terms of the education, the enthusiasm. You're was, a lot like him. Well, he was colorblind and I'm colorblind. So people, Oh always, my goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't even know yeah. that. Um, but, but, um, when you say that I'm a lot like Dean Collins, that's like a big, you know, that's a big pat on my back. I, 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 I really loved his style and his, the way he did things. You have a very similar style. Well, that's amazing uh, to hear that. But, um, but one of the things that I did when I, when this is just a little side, uh, note. I remember going to, uh, you know, WPPI and mm-hmm. photo plus, uh, long before I was even, you know, in the, in the, you know, who's who of what, you know, photographers, influencers. Um, and I remember going to a, a class and listening to a photographer speak and they get up there and say, I'm so amazing. I'm the best <laughs> photographer on the planet, you know, and, and then they would never give anything away. They, I mean, in terms of secrets it's all right. just, you know, generic, right, all the I'm, secrets. So, I'm so amazing. Right. And I'd go to three or four of those and go, what a waste of money. And then everyone around, around me is like doing the same thing. Like what a waste of money. Right. And I remember thinking also someone would get up and say, I'm so brilliant. I'm a genius, you know? And I thought, <laughs> okay, there's two things I'm not going to do on stage. One is I'm not going to get up there and talk about how amazing I am. And I'm not going to say I'm the smartest person in the room because I'm not. And so you can't, you can maybe fool five people, but you can't fool a hundred. Right. And so I get up on stage and I say, look, uh, I'm just a regular person. I have a passion for what I do. I work really hard. I'm very focused on a goal, you know, and I'm going to show you kind of what I do. And it's probably not the best way, but it's the way, the way I do it. Mm. And so you can maybe learn something from me, Mm -hmm. you know, and, and then I put the inspiration part in there. And so I say inspiration without education, without inspiration is really pretty boring. 
So that's been my journey as a teacher, and it seems to be working for me pretty well. And because um, you can, you people read you very well. People read you very well. Oh, they do. Yeah, you're right. So you have to be very careful, um, and your brand is very important on the speaking. The circuit. five out of one hundred is probably a fairly accurate percentage. You can fool about that five percent. Yeah, you can tell them anything, but the other nine ninety five, they're yeah. like, hmm. Yeah. Um, where where can people find you online? Well, so JoelGrimes.com is the main my, hub of everything. Um, I used to have JoelGrimesWorkshops.com. We're kind of shutting that down. Everything goes through JoelGrimes.com. Okay. And um, there's uh, I'm doing all these master classes now. So instead yeah. of me being live on stage like I've been doing 45 events a year, I'm cutting that way back to about five a year. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I'm building master classes and. Uh, which is time consuming, but it's still less time consuming. Also, what on Dean the road. did, by the way. Yeah. People would go and gather to see him in a, on a VCR tape. That's great. <laughs> and that's the, you reach the masses more. Well, yeah, because yeah. you only have so many hours in a yeah. day. Yeah. And, and I, to, to be honest with you, uh, standing on a stage, I've done it. I love it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm tired of it right now. Yeah. Um, and um, so, uh, very few live events uh, people keep asking me on when i'm down here hey do you do one-on-ones no don't do on one-on-ones um but unless you do you, workshops I, i'm cutting back on workshops but we're going to do i'm doing one right now uh so i do i'm going to switzerland with my wife and i we've had this for uh, on the books for a year and a half we'll be doing some workshops in switzerland but i'm doing a thing with roberto venezuela down in tucson and it's the uh he it's called the photo creators conference and experience and so we've got, there's, there's four instructors there. And yeah. so it's going to be a rotation. It's really kind of fun. So Roberto, uh, Jen Rosenbaum, it'll be me and Rocco. Um, uh, he's the sort of the printer guy, yeah. Uh, master. Yeah. yeah. And so um, it's, it's going to be May uh, 18th through the 21st. And it's down on the, the Tanker Verde Guest Ranch, which I grew up in Tucson. Uh, and Roberto grew up in Tucson. And it's, it was like your stomping grounds. Oh, well, and the, and the Tanker Verde uh, Guest Ranch has been around for a long time. Yeah. It's a, kind of a historical uh, 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 facility. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. And he actually is renting the whole thing oh so it's shutting down just for us and there's going to be some uh i think a country western i my kids don't say don't say country western but <laughs> country music uh band um and uh and then um you know there'll be a fire pit and we'll all be hanging out and doing some sure. fun stuff and but they'll rotate uh they'll you, if you go you get to hear all four of us at, right. in a block right so right. they just rotate around so i'm doing lighting mm-hmm. uh more strobe lighting um, Roberto's doing, I think, small flashes. Jen's doing natural light, a more natural light, LED, uh, uh, continuous light. And then Rocco's going to be doing the Photoshop and the retouching, the printing side of things. So awesome. it's a really cool event. Um, and, and then that's it. I think I'm not going to be, unless I do Adobe Max or something next year for Canon, I am taking this, I got this printer. Literally, I picked it up on Monday. I drove it home. I got in our my wife's car and drove here. I just laid hands on it. I didn't even get it's a chance. It's just sitting there it's waiting for you right now. brand spanking new. I laid hands. Mm. And Amy had to pry me off of it to get yeah. in the, her little yeah. uh, Toyota to get here because we <laughs> didn't want to bring it here because we're parking underground and all this no, stuff. Yeah, right. But I can't wait to do projects with that and, and uh, go out and do some fun stuff. I'm going to try to increase my YouTube channel more. I've done really very little on YouTube. I, we, our Facebook is pretty good. Instagram, my wife does pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, but really... Um, uh, the YouTube side of things has been lacking, so I'm going to start doing more YouTube kind of tips and techniques and follow the journey of Joel. That's awesome. Yeah. Everybody can get on YouTube. Yeah. Right. And so um, uh, fun things are coming up, you know, um, and, you know, hopefully I can still be doing this for a while. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this. This is fun. I, I didn't know if you would say yes to this or not <laughs> you, and you did and i was delighted so thank you for your time i i hope you have a wonderful rest of wppi 2020 excellent thank you 